All right, guys, uh, no, I've been preached a lot over the years and probably made a few believers out of y'all, but about the value of cover crops as weed control. And right here, I've got an absolutely prime example that if it doesn't show you the possibilities of what cereal rye and uh, other cover crops uh, with high biomass, what they can do for weed control, I don't know what else will convince you. Right here, we, we, we got a big old mess of pigweeds. Uh, apparently, I had a couple here in the corn crop last year and uh, went through the combine, and you can see the uh, spreaders just spread seed out about 12 rows wide, and uh, we definitely got, got, got a big mess here. But the one thing to notice is that looking down through here, the row itself is pretty clean i mean we got a couple coming up in the rows but primarily most of them are right here in the row itself right there now right here you know looking down through here they're right there in the row even one right here that looks like it's in the middle if you look at the base it's just a branch off of one that's in the row you know, you don't see uh, very many. Uh, we got one right there that's coming up in the cover crop, but this cover crop really keeps them from coming up. But the reason they're coming up in the row, you look down here in the middle of the row, we don't have a lot of residue. You know, from our burned down strips and then coming through here with a planter and the row cleaners and kicking any more residue to the side. So we've got plenty of sunlight uh, for these uh, pigweed right here to germinate. <laughs> And you see right there, you know, it's right there in the middle of the row. Same way over here. Now, I've told y'all quite a few times, you know, these pigweeds are by far our biggest problems. They probably drive about 90% of my weed, demand, weed management decisions, and they are quickly uh, becoming resistant to just about every, fo every form of chemistry. The only two chemistries right now that can control them is Liberty, which we're spraying under the hoods, but it's not going to do anything for these in the row. They're way too big and the, the hoods are not going to be able to get them. Then also Paraquat, which would, it'll literally nuke everything out here. So instead of relying 100% on chemistry, you know, these cover crops, you know, they're not fail safe on uh, keeping every weed out, but they are a very, uh, but they are, are another very valuable tool on, uh, on keeping weed on keeping weeds from coming up they're a lot more effective on some weeds that, than they are other probably more effective on broad leaves and what, what they are grasses but the one thing they are very effective on is pigweed now it's getting pretty late in the day i still got quite a few more acres to cover this uh spot right here will probably take me about uh, 30 minutes to chop so i'm gonna put it on my list we're gonna come back and get it in a couple more days i gotta get this pre-emerge down on the rest of my acres before that rain comes in tomorrow just look right down through there the middles where we got good residue clean where we don't have residue we got problems but right, looking at this female one here so it's done put out a seed head and you can tell it's female just by just by looking at it uh the the seed heads look different than what the uh, male pollinating heads do plus it's got uh it's got uh thorns on it so it feels feels pre pretty prickly but uh here in about two weeks this plant would probably have viable seeds so but don't worry i will definitely be out here before that two weeks happens to make sure i unalive all of these 